right let us do some stuff so welcome everyone to workshop wednesday the inaugural episode of workshop wednesday where today i'm gonna be making some walking sticks uh specifically i'm going to be adding some stuff to some sticks to make them walking sticks so this is going to be a present for some friends of mine basically um my dad was cutting down a cherry tree in his backyard and i kept about half a dozen different branches from that and i've already done some prep on these so i figured i'd give them out as walking sticks to some friends so i have three different friends i'm going to give these two late christmas presents and uh, I've done essentially no woodworking before in my life. Uh, I've done a little bit of uh, just um, like using a knife to, to whittle at, at, at things, but not like really making anything, just, you know, like sanding bits of wood and, you know, just trying to carve something into something. So I'm, I have no skill per se. I'm talking <clears throat> maybe 20 minutes worth of this work in my life, besides like sanding, which is like sanding is sanding. So what I've already done here is I cut off the tips. I can see better here. Uh, so I cut off the uh, top and bottom of these and then sanded them. And here's the, whoops, here's the bottom as an example. And then, like I said, sanded these down. And, uh, uh, and then I cut off any other little branches and things coming off of this. And... The idea is that I'm going to, from here, um, do two things to each of these branches. I have three of them. I'm going to add a leather grip to each one, and I'm going to carve the initial, the, the first initial of each friend into this. So again, the only processing so far has been cutting off any branches and sanding that down. And then I actually took some... Um, a little bit of sandpaper uh, to this just to shave down some of the rougher protrusions off this. I wasn't trying to sand it down. Obviously, I'm not removing any of the bark, but this is just the branch. You could carve off all of the bark, but I like the, the natural bark of this. So, um, I have three friends, and what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to start with the this leather um for the hand grip um i did play around with as you can see i cut off a little bit of this i can't see so i cut off a little bit of this and glued it to one a scrap piece of of wood with super glue just to see if that would hold and sure enough it did now i'll still need to do some some more with that but that's that's pretty good so now i need the, the grips so here is all of my here is the entirety of the leather i bought not a lot, but uh, there should be enough for these grips. Um, the advantage is that the width of these pieces of wood um, are not very much. So I just need some little uh, columns, if you will. I want the grips to be certainly bigger than my hand. Um, the largest person of these will have slightly larger hands than mine. Um, so I basically want these to be... I'm going to cut off pieces I think that are twice as long as this, and then I'm going to fold back some of it on either side. So it should end up being about oh, a total of 50% larger than my hand, which should be enough for each person. So um, here's my fist. So if I go up like this, that's up to about there. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out, and then going around these. Doo -doo -doo. So that's going around one. I'll obviously need more than that. Uh, but let me just fold that to give myself a sense. So there's... Okay, yeah. So I only need that much for this. Um, but I do want... Like that's... Eh, that could actually be about enough right there. Yeah, that's about right. So instead, so I'm going to go along here and cut. So again, I need to figure out 
This is the widest. And so I'm going to go around it once. Okay, so I've just gone around that once to there. And I'm going to fold that back on itself. And then again. And like I said, I want some more so I can wrap it around, um, you know, and, and, and do some edges. So I'm going to, um, I, I want to basically fold it under on one side and glue that. Um, so I'm going to go this far. These are special leather cutting scissors. I don't know if you technically need leather cutting scissors, but I, I bought them just in case. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just cutting out this rectangle. Okay. So there's my beginning of this. And then again, I, I need them to wrap around. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark. So there's that. And I want about that much more. So I'm going to cut off that much. Go with that. All right. So there's my first. Oh, there we go. There's the first uh, thing I'm going to wrap around this uh, this guy. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So here's my first walking stick. So I need to figure out where the hand is going to go. Um, I figure you want to hold it roughly like that. That feels about right. Maybe down here. Um, let me go with the biggest one first. Which is not what I measured for, but I think I measured I measured kind of further down. So if you want to hold this. So I, I feel it's most comfortable to hold this around here. Maybe up here. When, when you're walking, you want it to be, yeah, I feel about there. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it around there. But first, I need to glue in my edges. So let me yeah, put this to one side so I can keep, sort of keep that there. But I, I have my, my idea. Um, so basically, I'm going to wrap this around again like a cylinder. But I want to fold this under so we don't see the seam there, right? So I'm going to fold in about that much. I'm just going to use super glue. And hopefully I have enough. Ooh, I'm low on super glue. Huh. That might uh, tell us how much we're going to do here. All right. Um, need super glue. Oh, and I need a, a couple of books. So I'm going to take a nice big book. And I'll use that to hold this down. So again, all I'm going to do here, very simple, is run some super glue. Right like that. I'm going to hold it for a few moments. Eventually, I'll, I'll press this down. Whoops! Almost lost it. That's all right. Stay there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, I may need to just do this other side and then do them. Yep, okay. And I'll do a bit more up here. Because it looks like the super glue is. is kind of filling into the uh, into that. So if I actually if I just do this no all right. all right. I'm just gonna do that. So there's uh <laughs> there's our first round. Um, and then let's go ahead and work on the next one. Just need to know roughly how much I need for this. 
Okay, I could technically just cut this in half. Let's just go ahead and do that. And then fold in from there. Put that to the side. Hopefully it doesn't uh, glue it to the, the, the book or the table, but we'll see. Okay, there we go. And again, same idea. Let me grab some more books. There we go. So these will be what I have there. All right, so let me... So I'm going to go ahead and fold this so I know what I'm dealing with. Okay, I like that. And then, like I said, there's some super glue there, some super glue there. Super glue here. A little more on the crease. Fold and fold and then do it like actually that's not a bad idea and kind of slide it under okay so there's our second round and we'll go ahead and do the same thing here uh, this is awfully yeah, it's a bit too much material, I think. Even if I fold it under. And it's fairly uneven, so I can go ahead and shave some of this leather off. Get it more even. Still might be a bit much, but I'm experimenting, that's okay. All, all part of the process. In fact, up here is kind of uneven too. But I can always pull that down, okay? Oops. Again, before we do that, we fold, so we have a crease, and then we fold, so we have a crease, and then we're going to do a bunch of super glue up here, and a little bit down here, whoa, whoa, okay, that might be it for my super glue, a little worrying. That it? I see a bunch more in, down there. Oop. Do that. And do that. Okay. And then, like I said, I'm gonna grab this guy, put it here, and slide that under. Alright. So all of those are working. I see what looks like some super glue down. Yeah, there's a fair amount left. That was just bubbling. Okay. Um, I'm going to cap that for now so I don't get too much super glue going everywhere. Uh, let me just pop this up and see. Good. That's that's okay, but it still needs a, a few more moments. Um, hello, John T. I'm actually not doing so great. Bit of an upset stomach tonight. Um, not really feeling like it tonight, but that is that is life. How are you doing, John? Uh, all right, so as I mentioned, doing walking sticks, and uh, so I know I know where the grip is, and actually, well, no, I really want to put the the wraps, the I want to uh, wrap these around, and then from there, carve the initials on. So each one of these will ha will have the initial first initial of the owner, um, but I could just do that carving now. I, mean, I know that it's going to be up here somewhere you know i'm not oh ow ah. you know i'm not gonna have somebody nobody nobody's gonna hold the staff up here so i could out, go ahead and carve the initial already up where it needs to go so i think i'll go ahead and do that and like i said i kind of like this shape although is this one's bigger yep yeah, that's that's gonna be his so I can go ahead and do my my thing here so let me show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this I was just gonna go just to the side all right 
So let's come in here and get into some detail. All right, so here's my walking stick. Um, go ahead and clear some space. What you're gonna do is move these things over to another workbench for now. We'll pull them back in a minute. One nice thing about this, they, should, they move pretty easily. There we are. Ah! They do like to slide around now and fall. Okay. All right. So, like I said, um, all right. So I know I want my. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be right here. Is where my uh, my thing's gonna be. My the initial. And it's going to be an S. So I'm going to just kind of do an doop, doop, doop right there of an S. I'm just going to do that with a very simple knife. S. And so I want that to be here. And I'm going to start by just scoring it, trying to score it. I'm cutting as slowly and carefully as I can. Because obviously any mistake here is quite difficult to uh, to fix. I also don't want to cut myself. All right, so I've got that there. So I very barely scored this forming an S. You probably can't even see it. That's okay. Oops. All right, and then I'm going to come back over this with the edge of the knife. And essentially, I'm going to scrape it. I'm going to scrape along it like this. So I'm going to do these strokes along that that line that I just scored. So really, the line that I scored is just a guideline for this blade. And if I do it right, this will open up the. Ah. This will open up that channel of where I scored it. And make it more visible and also it means that if I if I made any mistakes on the line before I can kind of ignore it or carve something a little different with the blade and no one's the wiser Like I said, just along here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just carving these lines very, very simply. Nothing magical about it. I'm essentially rescoring the lines with the flat of the blade, but because that goes down a little deeper, or it's a little wider, it's a, a V shape, it's much more visible. And then you can just kind of repeat that, and it will just get deeper and deeper. Okay, so I've got a first pass there, which I don't know if you can see it all. Hold it up to the light. There we go. So there's my S, just starting. So now I'm going to go back into this, 
and try to go deeper. I'll actually go a little further too. And one thing I like about doing these uh, these shapes is that uh, they look kind of like runes, like old like Anglo-Saxon runes. Let's do it this way. You can see it good. We're doing these harsh angles. Which looks uh, kind of appropriately woodsy, appropriately staffy. You know, the kind of thing you'd expect on a staff like this. So just carving that in. The other reason I like doing this kind of thing is that uh, you know people expect something like this to look a little bit uh, well hand carved. You know it's not supposed to be a perfectly perfectly even shape. So if you go as even as you possibly can, a little irregularity just kind of adds to the character of the rune. So I think then I'll go down here. Like I said, dig in a little further on that. And that might be good enough for me. Although I think I'll go a little farther on the bottom of that. As you can see, more of that bottom. Okay, so there we go. So there's, there's that room. There's the S for that person. Pretty happy with that. So the the grip will go just below that. Cool. Okay. So that's carved. I'll go over to one side. Then next person is a K. And that's going to go. She's a little smaller. So that grip's going to go down about here, I think. Maybe even here for comfort. Yeah, I think right around here. You also have to figure out, I mean, um, weight is, an, is a factor as well. So this guy is pretty thin on top and pretty thick on the bottom. So you want that to, so you know, if you're holding it, even though it might make more sense to hold it up here, the weight of it makes it, makes it easier to hold down here. So if you're holding it like this, yeah, probably around there. So then I will want the rune, I might put the rune up higher, like around head height on this one. Kind of like that idea. Um, yeah, so right up here, there's a little area. Ah, keep knocking into these and they fall over. Um, so right up here, there's this, uh, this little area here. And right above there, I think I'll go ahead and put my, my mark. Um, I do need to move some things around though. Need to lower this table, and these are all going to fall over. I have another table over to my left, which has all of my uh, 3D printers on it, but I need to lower it so I can actually use it as a another resting spot for this. In the future, I'll remember to do that. All right, that's about even. All right, so that goes there. Let's see where we're going with the, uh, how we are with these guys. Okay, good. So here's the, uh, the grip. As we can see, that's nice and flat and stuck. I'm gonna keep it over here. No reason to uh, pull it just yet, but that means we can work on that as soon as we're ready. So, okay, so this is a K. And like I said, it's going, oops, it's going to go, whoop, 
Knocking stuff all over the place now. Move. Move, I say. Get that stuff going. Okay. That works pretty well. All right. So, yeah. So, that. So, right up here, we're going to put in a K. So, we need a, a line and then two marks off. So, just like before, I'm going to go with a line. And the thing is, there's already some markings here. But I don't think they're going to make a big difference. So, let me just go ahead and run my first scoring like that all right uh, so there's the first line and again I'll show you this once I've marked it there's that then we come over here off that line we come back down Again, going as straight as humanly possible. All right, need to do that. We need to repeat that line just so it's nice and firm there. And then, if I come from here, yeah. Oops. Have to go down a bit further. All right. So, again, it'd be hard to see, but there's the beginning of the K. So there's the, there's the line down for the K, and then two lines off it. So I'm going to go ahead and dig deeper into that. I always like to go deeper. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, that one's coming out much more easily. A much stronger line on this one than on the other one. Oops, dang it. Yeah. Okay. It uh, came off the line there. All right, so this one's a little unhappy, but I think it'll work out okay. And then we do this line. So as you can see, oops. So there's the line, and you can see it kind of went a little bit off. There's some extra little digs into the wood there, which I'm not happy with. But I think I can cover it up if I, if I dig a little bit deeper into this and have kind of a, a deeper scoring then I think I can essentially make it as, as deep as any of that, and that will resolve that problem. So the goal here is to get these runes done. And with something like this, where you're doing kind of a starburst pattern, you know, a line and then coming out from there, I like to not go too far on any one line, because I can always, once this is done, come back and extend any of these lines to make it even, but if I'm going like really far, really deep, it's very hard to do that. Very awkward. I'm gonna have to come backwards this way. That did not work out as well as I thought. So that K is a little bit, a little bit awkward. That's all right. And yeah, I'm definitely have to extend out that, that line down here. It goes over a ridge, which is also awkward, and can create some odd little visual illusions um, as you're looking at it, because that ridge will tend to mess with the shape of the line going over it. But not much I can do about that right now. Definitely extend this guy. So here's what I have so far. And again, so there's the one line of the K and the two marks going out from that.
but as you can see, like these need to come out a little further on both sides to match up with that back line, particularly the bottom one. That's the that's the big one. So let me pull a bit more southeast there and get that extended out. It goes down to another lump. And again, I'm not doing anything like weird and exciting here in terms of, I need to cut, need to score and get myself going there. There we are. You know, this is no weird knife tricks. It's just pulling this knife down in increasing, uh, increasingly deep ridges. And then, yeah, this lot's come up. Oops, I should score. Bring that up to there, I think. Yeah. Then. Cut that out. Good. Okay. So there's there's that. Okay, that looks fairly like K, but I'm gonna extend this line a bit, ironically enough. Alright, how much does that look like a K? That's a K. Alright. So here we go. There's your K. A little hard to see here, but I, I can't swing this around or else it'll uh, knock into the window back there. So I'm just going to deepen that a little bit. I'm just going to run over each of those lines another maybe twice. So this is a little more visible. Oops, ah, see that keeps digging in. It keeps falling off on that side and creating those little divots I don't like. And probably has a lot to do with my using a, uh, <laughs> an X-Acto blade instead of a, a real instrument for this. This is definitely not the way you're supposed to do this sort of thing. Ideally, I'd have this all nice and down in a vice clamp. So that'll be probably be another another thing I buy here pretty soon as a as a vice for these uh, these tables. Actually, I only bought these tables a couple of months ago. I'm not used to having a kind of a workshop space, which is pretty awesome. The main reason I'm doing this show is that I now have this workshop space, and I can use it. Whoops, sorry. One moment. There we go. Camera got a little funky. Now that I have these uh, these work tables, I can actually make stuff. Okay, so there's our K. Pretty happy with that. Definitely visible. All right. So there's that. And now on to the the final one. This is a, a much more complicated rune because it's J. All right, so like I said, this will be hand grip down about here. I think I do want to have the the grip. So I'm a little uncertain. Um, so the thing here is um, it's actually fairly low. It's a fairly um, not a very high stick, but the person I'm giving it to is a, is a little shorter than I am, so it'll, it'll fit well for her. Um, but and as you can see, it's it's a fairly curvy stick. It's not very straight. Um, on the other hand, the only other one I have of decent size is this one. And it's very curved. Like, it's almost a bow. Right? And, uh, like, you can certainly walk with a bow, a, a stick this bowed, but I didn't, <laughs> um, it's just thicker. But I think I'm gonna have to live with, with this one. So okay, so yeah. So how how would one want this? To, one would have, want to have this 
Probably like this, I'm thinking. Maybe like that. Yeah, so there's that. And so then I will have the J up here where it's visible. Maybe down here. So if she's holding it around here, the J should be about, hmm. Uh, it's tough because it's you know, curving right to the side here. And so if I put a J in there, it's gonna be curved, it's gonna be offset, but I don't know how to fix that. Unless I put it you know, like that on the, uh, the thing, that might make sense. Um, what will look better? I think it makes sense to have it off, uh, yeah, offset. So it's going to go like right there. Fair enough. All right. I just want to curve. All right. So like I said, I'm going to have it right in here. Start checking this again. Yep. I want it right between these two spots. So I want it right there. Right in there and kind of curve to the side. So let's work on that. And again, it's kind of weird because it's, it's a J. So we'll start with the middle line. And I'm going to see here. I'm going to go from there to there, I think. So we'll. I'm looking for sort of a connect the dots here because I have these, these nice little. Uh, lines on it itself okay i think that'll work i'm gonna score that line so i really know where i'm going okay and then i'm actually going to go ahead and deepen that because i need something to go off of already Ooh, this is a tough one because I'm not really going with the grain so it does not want to follow an easy line I have to go very slow Lee okay and then I will get up to there Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's the start of my J. So we have a J and then that's going to come over. So I'm going to need a, a line here. And I can just go ahead and mark that already. Um, so there's the top of my J, so I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Um, again, it's going to be kind of effing awkward because of the angle of the wood and the fact that it just does not want to follow the angle that I have here, but I'm just going to go with it. And uh, again, in this case, I'm going to try to be as, I'm not going to cut these out really, really wide because I can, I can always widen the top of the J. That's always doable. Um, okay, so there's the bottom of the J. I'm going to go over a little further on the line. And then I'm going to cut up. So here's the, that there, and we score that coming up this way. Okay. Yeah, definitely need more work on the, the lines, but uh, I'm not totally displeased with where this is going. Um, 
and I think I score this a bit further out this way, and I'm gonna, I can't spin it because I have no space to go over there. So I'm just gonna, just gonna carve more. There. Okay, and then, like I said, I'm gonna scrape out a bit more of this, of these lines. this nice and visible I'm trying to go down enough so that this rune really uh, really stands out still not sure exactly how I'm gonna do the rest of this like I'm planning on more or less just gluing gluing this the uh, the, the leather to the bottom of this or to, to around this and then holding it in place until it dries. Like, that's about it. So there might be a lot of kind of just doing this and holding on to something as it dries. That's just the reality of it. Okay. So then let's do a bit more. Okay. There's our J. Right there. Again, it's offset. So there's the there's the top of the J, and then the line going down, and then curving around to form the J. So it would be more. Uh, let's see if I can get a decent angle on this, and so you can see something closer to the J. Is that going to come in? No, not really. <laughs> there it is. On on the side. Okay. So we have our three walking sticks. Now it's time to, to figure out how to put the, uh, the grip on. So like I said, uh, so there's the S. I'm gonna put the grip down here, maybe, or around here. Around here, I think, makes sense for the grip. So see, if, I, if I were handling this, I want the grip around here. Okay, so it's going to go around here. Right around the, kind of the eye of Sauron there. And so it's just going to more or less, it's just going to wrap around like that. And then I actually want to fold should have done that already. Fold that in and then fold that on there. All right, so what I need to do is cut off some of this so I can fold it down. Come on. I'm going to basically fold this. Actually, I might be able to cut off enough of that. To just fold down that much. No, I need more. Okay, so I'm going to basically fold this like this. And then try to... Man, that's not going to work. Okay. Um, I'm learning. Uh, I may... Can I... Can I fold that much of the leather? So what I need to do here... had a camera crew. Oh! Especially to avoid that happening. Um, I want to fold maybe that much over, but the leather doesn't want to doesn't want to go there. Um, like it just can't it can't do that. Um, so I might be able to just cut out enough of this. Like yeah, it's technically glued together, but I can I can get past that. Ooh, it's actually, oh, interesting. The glue is coming up. Okay, I didn't expect that. It hasn't really dried properly, I suppose. Okay, but I think I can I can make this work. All right, 
think I'd shake well. I didn't shake it before. Should have shook, shaken it better. Okay. So again, I need to. Fold this over, like so. Good, that's working. Reasonably well. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little glue on me. And then this goes back here, and then I put a book on it. Okay, so I'm folding that over. Now again, we need to do the same thing here. Um, oh, yep, yeah, it's, it's coming up a little bit. So like I said, I, I managed to make this work before, wrapping something, wrapping it around and just gluing it, but I think there may be some issues here. And this could just be, you know, I'm, I'm super gluing it, but I'm not really waiting enough for this to really dry. It could also be I don't have enough super glue for this. I, I remember using a lot of super glue before. So yeah, that might be it. So, actually, I'm going to cut off a bit more so it will fold better. Okay, so there are our pockets. So that's what I cut off. Now I'm going to glue that. Come on, I know you have glue in there. Don't you? What? But for sure I saw some glue in here. Yeah. Yeah, there's some glue. Probably a bit too much. But, whoop. yep, sure enough, a bit too much. Let me pull some of that off. Almost had a super glue. Uh, accident, super glue emergency. Okay, pull that off. Try to avoid getting it on my hands, although there's already some on my hands. And then I'm going to do a trick. Need a bit more. Okay. book goes on that. Okay, I did get a bit of super glue on my fingers, but I think I can go ahead and rip that off. Yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. And then I've got this one. Oop, and yep, that it's already coming off. So let me off a significant chunk. Just fold that over. So those are all safely over there. Getting a little super glue on your fingers is not a big deal as long as it dries on one finger. So I've got some super glue superficially on there. 
Um, but again, it'll just dry and it'll flake off. The worry is if you do this and then you can't get it off. All right. So we've been going for about an hour and we've got our sticks. We've got, um, uh, and then we just need to put the, the leather on them, give it a few moments to dry. Um, like I said, we, I should probably wait like an hour for those to dry. But we don't have quite that much time. And uh, so if I, if I were doing this again, what I would do is I would basically, um, I would fold to the two sides inward and then cut the edges, cut the corners, and fold the other one down and glue all three sides at the same time all three edges and glue all those at once and then I'd be much further along than I am now right that's okay so oh so you may have noticed that I tore some paper towel off put that on there it's because there was a little bit of super glue quite a bit of super glue actually gooping out on the edges so I put some paper towel down um, on that so the book is going to go down on top of the paper towel, and the paper towel will be on top of the leather with the super glue. So if it, any of the super glue does goop out on the bottom there, you know, and it's kind of gooping around, it will stick to the paper towel. And then when I pull the book off, it's not, it's not stuck to the book, it's stuck to the paper towel. So I can then tear the paper towel off. There may be little bits and pieces stuck to the, the, uh, the leather. But that's okay, because that's the inside of the leather. I'm never going to see that again. So it is totally okay to have some paper towel stuck on that side. So paper towel is a good way of soaking up some of that 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 uh, super glue and keeping it from sticking to whatever's whatever's your weight on the super glue. Uh, so again, these are leather cutting shears. Like I said, I don't know quite what makes them different from. In fact, let's do some experimentation. Here's a strip, and then. Here is, here's just some regular old shears. Yep, that cuts them just fine. At least as well as those shears. So I don't know why you would need these. So I'll probably end up giving these away somewhere because they are uh, just not really necessary. You learn things. At least you know, this is fine. Okay. I'll go ahead and put those in the in the closet for later work or for giving away probably all right so that's that's a good experiment a little bit of scrap leather I now have don't fall I now have this much leather left over so I've got this bit this this chunk you can see here and then oh, come on and then this here, which extends about there. So, you know, it's certainly enough for something. I don't know what I'd use it for, uh, but it's good to have some spare leather um, for some kind of a project. I believe it's cowhide, just straight up normal cowhide leather. Um, I think the entire piece, which is probably about, you know, yay big, uh, was 20 or $30. So not insignificant, but also not, not terrible, right? This is certainly a, it's certainly affordable for this kind of a project. And, um, yes, yeah, so this would be nice for, for something or other. I might use this for a role-playing prop. Um, actually, you know what I want to do with this is make a, a little book. So that's, I think what I'll do next is I'll make a little journal that uh, has a leather co cover like this. And I believe typically you, you uh, glue this to cardboard, and then the cardboard is on the, the paper. Um, cardboard is a typical kind of uh, yeah, cover for a book, you know, with the leather on it. So I'll look that up, but I think that, that, that'll be a good, good use of this leather. So then I'll just go ahead and roll this up a bit. That'll be used for another project later. So obviously I'm just kind of delaying until I can get the, uh, the rest of it back. But in the meantime, let me go ahead and uh, go and grab some tea. And we will be right back. Freshly baked to your order.
make sure you get yours and enjoy it now. It's four minutes till showtime. What's your pleasure, sir or madam, and all you kiddies, too? Sandwiches, freshly made from quality ingredients, soft drinks, cool, tangy, and refreshing. A hot dog? There you are, tender, juicy, done to a turn with some fixings. Hamburgers, ma'am? Just the way you like them, meaty, moist, and broiled to perfection. Soft drinks, kiddies? Take your choice, cold, tingly with flavor, all your favorite soft drinks for your selection. Something to eat for everyone, soft drinks to make your evening complete. Delicious, fresh, and satisfying to help your entertainment reach the peak of family fun. It's three minutes till showtime. Ice cream bars. It's the handy way to enjoy smooth, rich, creamy ice cream. Get some. Yes, sir, the hot dogs at our concession stand do rate an appreciative whistle. It's two minutes till showtime. Yes, there's an air about hot coffee that's hard to resist. Full-bodied, refreshing hot coffee makes any time a pleasant interlude. Won't you have some now? It's one minute till showtime. Please remember to replace the speaker on the post when you leave the theater. Settle back now, content, comfortable, well-fed, and ready for some fine entertainment. Is everybody happy? Then let's go. It's showtime. All right, we are back. And now it's time to look at that weather and see if it's usable. Uh, yeah, I think I can make use of this. It's not really sticking, but it's folding over enough. So, like I said, this is just kind of me messing around. Uh, so this is, this should be S's. Where's the S? Why can't I see the S? Where, why can't I find the S? The S should be around here. Anyway, is this not the S? Whoa. Uh, not the S. It's not one. Is that the S? 
Where is the S? Is that the J? I'm confused. I, is that the... Oh, it's over here. I wonder I couldn't find it. There it is. Okay. So like I said, so the grip's going to go here, which means it's going to wrap around this, essentially, and then be glued like that. So that is the plan. Um, not sure how well it's going to work out. But, uh, so I need a, a safe place to start. Uh, yeah. How did I do this before? I think I just gripped it. Okay, well, we'll just give it a try. Um, Alright, so... I think the only way to do this is going to be to do it. Oops. Get all that glue on the bottom. Front of tip. And then just really go nuts with this. Like it needs to stick. Okay. And I will probably end up gooping in the corners later. But for now. Okay, I'm going to have to do this standing up. So we start here and wrap it around and get super glue on our fingers. Yeah. And then do that. Okay. And I'm just wrapping that around and I'm just holding it with my fingers. And I'm occasionally taking my hand off because I really don't want to end up with super glue, super gluing myself to this. I'm just holding it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna grip this for probably, I don't know, 60 seconds, a minute, two minutes. I just want this to stick. So I'm gonna let it stick. Like there's no reason for me to, to do anything but, but that. And obviously this will end up with some, uh, some wrinkles because, you know, it's lumpy. This is not a perfectly smooth cylinder, um, but that's just part of the reality of it. Yeah, I'll probably end up digging in those, those symbols a little bit further, those runes, because they're a little hard to see. And I just want them to be a little more visible. So, yep, just removing my fingers occasionally to make sure I'm not, not getting super glued to it. And, uh, and we'll see. So obviously this is a slightly more boring part, but let me see what happens if I take my hand off one part Hold the rest of it a little bit more, and then do that. Okay, that seems to be holding, but like I said, there's really no reason for me to, to rush this process, other than the fact it's not particularly exciting to watch. So I'm just holding it, like that. And letting it dry. And letting it stick. Now, it's certainly possible that Tomorrow, I'll look at this stuff, and it will end up being um, something will have peeled off, or peeled away somewhat. At which point, I take some super glue and fix that, right? You know, I spread some more super glue on that, push it down, and hold it for a few minutes, and repair that. the The hope is that it doesn't, you know, completely uh, fall off in that time. So hopefully that's going to be enough super glue to hold this in place. I think it will, based on my previous experiment. Um, how long does it say you need to hold it? Um, okay, up to a minute. I mean, 45 seconds it says. So I'm letting this go, 
And yeah, it's, I mean, it's wrinkled, but it's there. It's bonded on. I can live with that. Like I said, the wrinkling is more or less um, inevitable with something like this. So yeah, this is probably going to peel away a little bit, this edge. So I may end up having to super glue some more of that, but that's fine. I've now got my grip. So there's the grip. All right, so here's a walking stick. There's the, the leather grip. And he's got his name or his, his rune right there. Cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lay that out to one side. Instead of having it propped up and falling over constantly. Um, all right, I think this was the one. Okay, no, that's, that's another one. There's one I had over here that I didn't actually use yet. The really bowed one. I think that's the really bowed one. Uh, yeah, that's the bowed one, so I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to put that way out of the way. So I'm not confused by myself. All right, so here's the next one. And uh, same process as before, really. Um, I decided I want the grip down around here. So I, I may end up even covering. There's uh, So the grip's going to be here. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cover this. I mean, you, obviously you want as cylindrical a, a, a section as possible. So this is going to be kind of awkward. So I, mean, I, I kind of ideally, quote unquote, it would be down here, but I kind of want to cover this up a little bit. But it may end up, may end up having to put it down there. Yeah, okay. So let me grab my next piece. All right, so here's the one I was having the problem with. Oh, and good, and the paper just came right off. So no issues with that. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and do this. Um, actually, there's a, that's sticking out quite a lot and it's gonna be a problem. So right here, there's a bit of a branch that's sticking way out and is gonna be a significant um, bump in the final thing. So I'm gonna grab some sandpaper Sandpaper, so I got some, some pretty deep. Oh, good, this is multiple sheets. Uh, so I have some, this is some medium grit, but I want some firm grip for a uh, coarse grit sandpaper. How do you un. Uh, funky sort of. All right, let's do that. And then you unseal it that way. Okay, so that, and then you're supposed to, I don't get it, all right. So there's some nice coarse grit sandpaper right there. And I'm just going to sand that. And my goal is to sand it away. That's doing a very good job of doing. Or a very good job of. There. That's sanded off a large chunk of it. And the nice thing actually, now that I'm looking at it, you know, since this is gonna go under the the leather grip, it doesn't have to look good. So I can I can sand off a lot of that things that I really wouldn't want to mar the wood finish of, I can go ahead and nuke. Yeah. I'm just going to annihilate that with some, some sandpaper. That's much better. Good, yep. So that's much less of, a, of an issue. All right, so like I said, so, so like before, make sure this will actually wrap all the way around, just barely. 
Just barely. Wow. Um, if I go up here, is that better or worse? It's a. Uh, oops. I should get the sand. The sawdust off of there. Although it's actually. This is not sawdust because there's no saw. Um, so, like I said, I kind of like to cover that. Do it like this. That's not terrible. Do it there. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that. So we go down to just under there. All right. Let's do it. Wow, so I should have made these significantly wider, but I think it'll work. And this will expand a lot, right? But I want it to expand. I want to have a significant amount of of grip on this. Okay, and then I'm gonna have to do this from here. Uh, go like that, wrap it around, and then grip it. Okay. And I'm just gonna hold that, like I said, for several minutes. It says up to 45 seconds, but you know how these things are. And I'm occasionally adjusting my grip so that if any super glue comes out, it won't uh, bond to my fingers, just in case. Because that would kind of suck. Going to the emergency room. Um, so uh, I have this problem uh, I, I kind of super glued myself to a walking stick. <laughs> sure, it's not the first time they've seen that happen, or something like it, but still, rather not be you. Ah, yeah, the sawdust is getting in my my uh, my nose a bit now, but we're nearly done. I mean, that's two of the three, and then uh, I've got my walking sticks done. So apologies if I've been a little uh, low-key on this one. Like I said, I've been feeling a little under the weather. And if I had my druthers, I'd be uh, laying on the couch right now. But I said I'd do this this week, so I will. Just keep on holding this. Make sure that bonds as much as possible. So these be these be uh, fun gifts for my friends. I'm planning on doing this stream probably every other week on Wednesdays, crafting something, building something, sometimes uh, electronics, sometimes like crafts, like sewing or things along those lines. Maybe some food. Who knows. I think this would be a fun, interesting little uh, little side project to uh, constantly be making something, constantly building. One of the other reasons I like to change my grip occasionally is because you know, your two hands are not always giving even pressure pressure everywhere. So by changing your grip a little bit, you're adding some pressure on places that wouldn't otherwise get some uh, some effort. Okay. How we doing? All right. Yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty solid. There's our grip. Like the other one, it's it's a little wrinkled, but that's quite, quite reasonable for the kind of thing we're doing. You're gonna get wrinkles in something like this. Okay. One more. And once we're done, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, carve into these these runes a bit more. Um, we're not quite done yet. Okay. So here's the last one. Oh, I'm going to remind myself where I'm going to put this. So this person's a little lower. And the... Yeah. So 
I want that to be there. All right, so it'll end right here. So or it'll, it'll the, the top of this will be there. So it'll go around like this, covering that. And this is, oh good, a lot of overlap on this one. All right. So let's do it. You know what we're doing now. This is the fun bit. Once you're experienced. Shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, it's gonna have how it's gonna have to be. Some gaps, some some wrinkles, which I would have preferred to avoid, but such is life. And that'll actually add a little bit of of interesting grip to the leather where those wrinkles give you a little bit of um, a little bit of space um, or a little bit of ex a little something extra for the fingers to grip onto when it's gripping the leather um, obviously it's not not something you really want but it, it does have that effect which is not the worst thing in the world So we're nearly done with this, and this has worked out pretty well, to my somewhat surprise. And I'm not uh, not disappointed in this. The other nice thing of this is that I can now get rid of all of the, the scrap wood that I had sitting around. It was just kind of uh, ready for this project. I wonder if I could do... No, I don't really have... No, nothing else is reasonably sized. Oh well. Um, still want to keep up the pressure a little bit longer. Hey, Fisher! Glad you're here. I'm just finishing up this project, making this walking stick, actually three walking sticks. So I've got the leather grip on here. I'm trying to make sure, yeah, okay, that's good and stuck. All right, yeah, I'll probably come, come back and uh, fix some of this stuff. So here's the leather grip glued on here. I do expect that this, this edge is going to uh, pull up a little bit. So we'll have to fix that at some point. You can't see that very well. So you can see how this is pulling up a little bit. So once I've had a chance to dry, maybe tomorrow, I'll come back and just put a little glue in spots like that and, and hold it down and just do the those last little bits of exercise. But before then, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and um, deepen the rune I cut into here. So there's the S and I'm going to just dig that a little bit deeper. Let's do a few more rounds of that. Actually, I have some stuff I can get out of the way here. Those big books that I was using to hold things, get those out of the way so they're not, I'm not bumping into them. All right, so I'm going to grab this and just score into it. Again, trying to be careful 
to not <laughs> screw it up. But I like this to be even more noticeable than it currently is. So a few extra passes I think will help. So yeah, this is uh, this is the new workshop Wednesday. Like I said, hopefully this can become a regular thing where I'm showing you guys how to make stuff. Got a whole list of interesting like electronics projects and crafts and stuff that I want to make that we can uh, make together, so to speak. I do this so you can see it. Helps when you actually can see what I'm doing. Kind of the whole point of live streaming, right? Yeah, it's definitely, oops. Definitely much more visible. And again, I'm just digging down with the, on the edge of the blade. And so that V digs in and creates a, a V-shaped cut in the wood which is more visible than if I was just going down with the the blade glad to hear Fisher that you enjoyed Kino's journey both of them if you could contrast the two how would you how are they different because I've watched the entire original Kino's journey and the first I think the first episode of the first two episodes of the new Kino's journey so other than obviously the, the art style got shifted a bit any other noticeable differences? Okay, yeah. There's that's a much better version of that rune. So there's the S. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the others. <coughs> there's absolutely no shame, of course, in doing something and realizing, oh, you know what? I can improve that. Dang, I keep doing that. There must be something about the wood that causes it to try to... <clears throat> to fall off there, to, to create those scratches. Do this line. I try not to go backwards on this because I'm always worried that I'm going to uh, mess something up, but now that I'm doing it, it actually works kind of better than going backwards. So maybe I should do that more often. Yeah, that's digging in nicely. Okay. I think it would be harder to do it this way when there's no line to follow. But once you have, yeah, like going over that lip is really hard with this. So I think I'll use edge of the blade going that way when going over that, that lump. But otherwise, Going the first way is rather nice. Okay. There's a bit there I want to peel off. All right. Yeah, there's the much more readable K. And now we'll do the J over here. Where'd that J end up? There it is. All right, so there's the J off, offset. And now let's just go ahead and deepen that so it's more visible. And then, you know, I found super glue, like it's, it, it technically sets very fast, 
but there's always that weird brittleness and like it, it fuses over time um, and so it's better to come back to it after a little while to really get the full uh, the full bond the full final bond like a few hours maybe that's just me So I'll I'll fix any little any final uh, final problems with the leather probably tomorrow. But like I said, there's nothing nothing magical about that. It's just going in and dabbing a little extra glue and things that are peeling off and holding that down. And then these will be ready to give away, which is quite exciting. I literally had this wood sitting on hand for a year. I think it's over a year. At least a year. Waiting for the right uh, things. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, it, it was like it was like February, March of of last year that I got this. So yeah, how is uh, Kino's journey different? The, the various versions. I'm I'm curious, if at all, because I know some of the the stories in the new the new season, if you will, are remakes of the original season, and some they did not do in the original season. It's based on a series of novels, so I think they're all adapting storylines from the novels. All right, then the top of the J. Yeah, going going forward is not bad at all. I guess it is. Yeah, it is. It is a little easier to possibly pop off the the ridge that way. Okay. There's our J. Oops. All nice and carved in. Again, you're looking at it kind of upside down. But that's the idea. All right. So that is, let's go ahead and hopefully I can show you here. Oops. There we go. Here's the final staff if you will, with a leather grip. And there's a, uh, the, the recipient's name is carved, or the first letter of their name is carved in right there as a rune onto the wood, just using a, like an exacto blade, basically. And we just used some super glue to put this on. Um, and we'll come back later on and and tack in any bits that are are pulling up. But in general, I think this does pretty well. There's that leather. Again, it's a little wrinkly, but for a homemade job, not too bad at all. And that's our project. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There is our our project. There's our our thing. Ah, no problem, Fisher. Enjoy the original a bit more than the remake. The original storyline had episodes had a bit more impact. That's interesting. So the uh, the original maybe maybe they uh, they pulled their punches a little bit in the in the new season. That's not uncommon for these sorts of things. The, the new season is uh, you know isn't quite as daring perhaps as the original one. You know, the, the original season of Kino's Journey came out, gosh, um, around the year 2000, maybe 1999, something like that. And um, it was a little easier to make more experimental, uh, the kind of stuff that was uh, a little harsher. Uh, fewer folks were paying attention, so to speak. All right, so uh, unfortunately we're done 
for the evening with that particular project. And uh, this video will go up on YouTube, so you can go and watch me make all of this. And, uh, and the entire process it took me about two hours to make three walking sticks. That's not too bad at all, um, given, given everything involved. Uh, not that there was a lot going on here, but that's, that's kind of nice. So, um, all right, so that's about it. Um, I'll see you guys on Friday for the live stream. Um, and that's about it for this. So, again, thanks all. See ya.